This is the GIS News Hour for Tuesday, October 19. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, OECS agriculture ministers to put proposals to their heads for an increased mar market access for farmers. Government recognizes those who lost their lives on October 19, 1983. Paper on predial larceny to be presented to OECS agriculture ministers on Wednesday and some traffic changes to accommodate urgent road repairs in the city. Those were the headlines. Details are next. VAT is a consumption tax. An individual's consumption is one of the best indicators of living standards. Consumption is therefore a fair tax base. There has been a decrease of over 75% in the exportation of our number one crop. Why add VAT to this already crippled agriculture sector? Madam Chairman, this is preposterous. The annual Renlec Intersecondary School Debating Competition where speech meets energy. We must always be cognizant of the fact that only one man in a thousand is truly a bond leader of men. The other 909, Mr. Chairman, follow women. Public policy, morality and responsibility, growth and poverty, the legal system. Get ready to watch the action on television. The Grand Lake Intersecondary School Debating Competition. Powering bright ideas. Welcome back, viewers. Three components have been outlined and sent to OECS heads for consideration by which farmers can get increased markets in the tourism sector, one of these being purchasing more local foods. This was revealed by agro-tourism specialist with ECA, Ms. Ina Harvey, as she outlined key points in a presentation titled Linkages Between the Tourism and Agriculture Sectors. It was delivered in one of the sessions at the National Stadium where the Caribbean Week of Agriculture is being held. Ms. Harvey says tourism starts with the people of the Caribbean and they need to consume local food so that farmers will have a cons consistent market for their crops. On a regional level, ECA is partnering with other organizations to solve the problem. Buying more local fresh food, buying more local processed food. And again, we have to disabuse ourselves of the notion that it is mainly fresh food that we have to link with the hotels. When you look at a food and beverage um, buyer's list, the majority is processed food. It's frozen items, canned items, ready-to-cook items. So let us put that as a context. There have been some studies done looking at what is real demand. What do hotels buy? When do they buy? What do they need? In what form? What is the quality, the presentation, the packaging? The study, the recommendation that we're putting forward for the study is that there be a regional demand study because there's no one study looking at what does the regional tourism sector require from the agriculture and agro-processing sector in terms of its food. That we are beginning this year, hopefully, to look at, we've already spoken with the OECS Secretariat, to start doing that demand study at the sub-regional level and then we will widen it. Ms. Harvey says some Caribbean countries like Jamaica and Trinidad have taken bold steps to deal with the issue by treating agriculture as not just a way of life but as a business. This, she says, other countries can learn from. In Jamaica, for example, I have to laud Minister Tufton's efforts in creating resort markets for farmers. The Ministry of Agriculture in Jamaica has taken a very business-like approach to doing supply and demand studies. They've been in identified 19 commodities out of 130 that the hotel sector uses to focus on to establish greater linkage for farmers right into the hotel sector. There is a Greenhouse Growers Association in Jamaica 
comprising a lot of entrepreneurs who are not farmers, engineers, doctors, and so on, who have seen the investment potential for growing greenhouse crops to get into the hotel industry. And I'm told that over 90% of the lettuce grown by the Greenhouse Growers Association goes into the tourism sector and into food service. In the Bahamas, similarly, they've identified 15 commodities and they've done the analysis because the Bahamas imports 500 million US dollars per year in food. And they have seen it as a problem. In Trinidad, they've identified another basket of commodities. So the good news is that at the national level, this is being recognized. And we do have the cooperation of our tourism partners. Meanwhile, there is a call for regional governments to make the type of investment that will lead to a revitalization of the agriculture sector in the region. It comes from Antigua and Barbuda's Agriculture Minister, Hilson Batiste, who is also concerned that there is a failure on the part of authorities in the sector to recognize the importance of the industry to national development. He says cutting back on a country's import bill by practicing backyard gardening is a good way to get people involved in the process. Every year, the region imports in excess of $8 million worth of food, and this, Minister Batiste says, is unacceptable. While exporting is a good thing to make money, bring in capital, foreign exchange, we must begin to feed our own, feed ourselves. Look at the amount of food we import in the country, in the Caribbean, for the year. $8 billion worth of food in the entire Caribbean. And we have the best climate for food production. The best climate. The best climate for agriculture investment. We should be feeding our own self. Everything we eat from breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and in between. Look at the investment that can take place in agriculture. From agro-processing right down to to, to, to whatever you want to call it in our culture. The clothes where we come from our culture. All the foods we eat from our culture. We produce some of the best sale and cut in the world in the region. Japan grabs everything we produce and send back the cloth to us. Let's begin to look holistically at our culture. In the same breath, the Antiguan Agriculture Minister noted that it must become the responsibility of every citizen to create a local market for farmers eat what we produce begin to do that that's the main thing and everybody media workers everybody when you go and shop buy local produce help the farmers and cut out the imports the danger of that is that when chicken come into grenada from wherever they come from you don't know what chemical they put in those chickens you don't, know what kind of, you don't know what kind of feed they give them. And that's why little boys at age 10 have a breast. And girls at age 8 have a breast. Figure it out. That's why people are getting sick so fast. They don't sell those chicken in their country. They produce them just for export to us. Because we're third world countries. We've got to begin to produce our own. Poultry, pork, beef, milk, cheese, everything that this is where the high price is in those processed food that come to our country every day. The chief coordinator of the Caribbean Farmers Network, Mr. Jethro Green, says there must be a sustainable development market for farmers to sell their crops. If we are able to develop sustained market for the farmers and, in and integrate production planning with marketing, we would have a very viable agriculture system which would be sustainable and which would be profitable. We can't, we're not just going to agriculture just for the fun of it. It has to be profitable. And basically what the minister is saying does, we have to promote it not only a tree prong approach, not only for export, but also we have to get people to consume our food. You know, I would tell you that when tourists come into your country, they want to sample your local cuisine. But even today, at the, at the, at the fair, Grenada is famous for cocoa, but what did we have at the break? There was no cocoa tea at the break. Now tell me, here's an opportunity to promote a product that you're sharing, and there was no cocoa tea at the break. Where were the Grenada products to promote? So we must first put our house in order and try to get our thing going. 
In other news, government has given recognition to the Grenadians who lost their lives on October 19, 1983, with a reed laying ceremony at Fort George, which was then known as Fort Rupert. October 1983 is arguably the most traumatic period in recent Grenada history. Within a week, the nation lost its prime minister, several other cabinet ministers, leaders of business and labor, military personnel, school children, and other civilians. In four years leading up to 1983, Grenada was ruled by the People's Revolutionary Government of Prime Minister Morris Bishop. The PRG came to power on March 13, 1979, after the New Jewel Movement overthrew the government of late Prime Minister Sir Eric Gehry. The PRG, despite accomplishments such as embarking on the construction of an international airport and advances in literacy and health, was criticized by internal and external forces on a number of fronts, including its refusal to hold Westminster-style democratic general elections. By 1983, the PRG and NGM were beset by their own internal leadership differences on the direction the country should take politically and economically. The situation reached ahead when Prime Minister Bishop was placed under house arrest at his residence at Mount Welldale. On October 19, 1983, a massive crowd of supporters marched on Mount Welldale, freed the Prime Minister and took him to the military headquarters of the People's Revolutionary Army, Fort George. Soldiers of the PRA were dispatched to retake Fort George, ending in the deaths of Mr. Bishop and many of his supporters. A revolutionary military council was set up to run the country, but their rule ended on October 25 with an invasion by United States troops, supported by soldiers and police from some Caribbean countries. U.S. troops arrested RMC, PRG, PRA and NGM officials, including former Deputy Prime Minister Bernard Cord and Army Chief Hudson Austin. Eventually, 17 people were charged, convicted and sentenced to be hanged for the murder of Prime Minister Bishop and others on Fort Rupert. The sentence was later commuted to life in prison. The prisoners mounted a successful appeal and a judge ordered a resentencing, leading to their release from the Richmond Hill prison. The event of October 25, 1983 has since been officially recognized as Thanksgiving Day, a national holiday in Grenada, Caracou and Petit Martinique. Well, during the service at Fort George on Tuesday, Dr. Terence Marichaud of the October 19 Martyrs Foundation commended the government for recognizing the victims of October 19. He is hoping, however, that consideration will be given to making the day a national holiday. We believe that this is a step in the right direction, but we believe that this day is a day that should be set aside for national reflection, a day which represents the most tragic day in our history, a day from which we all should draw lessons from, and we believe that a day like this should not pass as just another ordinary day where people just go to work and do things as usual, because of the significance of this day for the present and for posterity, we believe that we should go a little further and that this day should be declared a national day of reflection and also a national holiday.